Bam Margera and being kind of stuck at the bottom of the hero's journey in the fucking hell pit. Where you don't want to be. And I think a lot of that has to do with the tribe that you're in. That's a really kind of scary thing. So let me kind of break this down. Also kind of look at this video in contrast with the one I just did with Brad Pitt. So Bam and the Jackass crew, like, you know, I'm, I'm older. So these guys are about my age, maybe a little bit older. So these are guys I grew up watching. So much of the Jackass guys were an influence on me big time. And so a lot of these guys have gone through massive hero's journeys, drug addictions, alcohol, rehab, jail. Anyways, a whole cast of characters, different types. So uh, Steve, I want to do a video on him. He's the same guy as uh, the Colin Fa 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 Fuzz guy. You know, the guy who's building a fucking basement under his yard. Uh, Play Blast, S-E-T-E. -E. Uh, here's ESTP. So this is similar to Donald Trump. Uh, ENFP, I believe. ENFP, I know. Uh, this same type as uh, Thor, uh, Chris Helmsworth. Same, same type, party boy. God damn, I love the party boy ones. Bam, being a double masculine ESTP. Now, what's interesting about the double masculine ESTPs is they do make some of the best bad guys. You got Trump. There's a couple other guys in there. A lot of the guys that are double masculine ESTPs, of course, the cranked up version, the sleep last version. And then on the other side, you'll see people like TD Jakes where they really kind of figure out who they are. They use their FE. They're some of the greatest, some of, some of the greatest bodybuilder guys and heroes that I follow are this type. And then some of the worst guys ever are also this type. So it's a hell of a, it's a hell of an interesting doc, right? And so you've got the uh, double masculine SE, FE. So the extroverted functions, the sexual functions. And then you've got that punchiness with those functions and they're double activated. And then you've got this feminine sleep world. That's the real kick in the balls there, to uh, put it in jackass terms. So you're going to be feeling very insecure, very not good enough, very threatened, very bipolar all over the place. And you see that with Bam, even though he has Savior TI, there's a lot of insecurity, a lot of bipolarness in this kind of type, in this kind of setup, you know. But the outside world's like, what are you talking about? You're the loudest guy. You're the most obnoxious guy. I remember even growing up watching Jackass. It was like everybody else and Bam. I didn't really like Bam, Bam as much because he, out of all these rowdy guys, he was the most rowdy. And, and even like Knoxville and all those guys had to like tell Bam like, hey, could you, could you, can you dial it down a little bit? You know, if the Jackass crew is telling you for 20 years, can you dial it down? Which is now what it's become where the entire Jackass crew is now just a, a united around how do we help Bam go through fucking rehab and stuff like that. So the clips I got are actually of Steve-O, who was the most funny, obnoxious, crazy, uh, it's silly guy at the time. The guy you would think, if you were to put your money down, you'd be like, okay, steve going to be the guy that goes off the cliff and never comes back. Which he did. He did go into rehab and all that, but he did come back. So if, if fucking Steve-O, Steve-O of all people, one of the craziest guys on the planet, if he's trying to walk you through the hero's journey, you're in a really bad place. And I really, really want you to know that even though I don't think you, you choose to believe it, the fact is that the whole you getting your contract canceled or whatever you want to call it, kicked out of Jackass 4, was, was genuinely the same as me getting an intervention from Johnny Knoxville. You know, like the same I know, people. But I got so much to say. Like, in Jackass 2... I got high five got drunk at the LAX airport with brass knuckles. I got a fucking felony charge and I got high five for good press. Now I wind up sipping on a beer out front of a hotel on TMZ and I get kicked out for, for being a liability. It's just fucking ridiculous. It's ridiculous because it's unfair. Life is unfair. Just still in the, where's the bullshit stage? Which one's the fucking bullshit stage? Struggling to find meaning, reaching out, telling one story. Yep. Telling his fucking story. Telling us a fucking sob story. Like, dude, bam, you're like fucking 50. You're, you're in really bad shape. No, no, it was them and then the TMZ. And like, really? Fucking really, dude? Still at the blaming and, the, and every little thing out of context? Really? Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll entertain some of that. And, <laughs> and back in the days of Jackass no number two, we were in our heyday. We were at our worst. Drugs and alcohol were still working for us. Nobody was getting locked up in rehab or jail or like just, yeah. you know, having public meltdowns. And yeah. I, I hope that you can understand that at a certain point, like specifically over the last few years, that it stopped being fun, it stopped being yeah. funny, it stopped yeah. being cool, it stopped being something that we want to give give you a high five for because we're like, we've been watching you self-destruct. Yeah, it's a look at Steve-O looking at it from an outside perspective. So Steve-O being more SE than Brad Pitt and Bam here, right? So you got, you got, the, they got the SE crew, right? Steve-O is looking at things in an NIFI perspective, just like Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt is not like, my dad, and then this, and then TMZ, and then that one. He's like, uh, uh, Okay, so we, as kids, we tend to do this as parents. What I was doing was bottling up. So he's getting, to, like, when your problems become like, oh, I'm just being a bullshitter. Oh, I'm just, and you get it down to a category, you're, then, then you have it, you're like, okay, it's this behavior. Well, let me put that aside. When somebody is drowning, 
And that's the thing to kind of look out for. I mean, if, if I were to pass a message here is look out for the drowning. When, when somebody is in that stage where it's excuses and blame and long stories about how everybody did them wrong in detail, that's what you got to look out for because that's a very infectious person that is not ready, that is just not ready for growth. And that's something that's that you, if you watch Steve-O with the interviews, you see Steve-O with you know, an extroverted guy, really cares about his buddy, but eventually you're watching enough, you're like, Steve-O, just let him go. Like, you gotta let him hit the fucking bottom, right? You'll see people that are not quite down to the bottom, and they're in this fucking stage, right? And they've gotta go all the way down to the bottom. And the thing is, and it's gonna be so hard if you have kids, you have a loved one, is like, you've gotta, you, you gotta let them do what you had to go through, or are going through to some degree, or have gone through in some degree. And that is, you've had, whatever you've had growth, you've had to hit rock bottom. You've had to have it where nobody else is there. Everybody says, I hope you fucking die. All the thing, all the coping, all everything's running out. You have to be down at rock bottom where you're like, all right, I have to now face this. I have to own this. I have to stop bullshitting. I have to push myself out, right? You've, that's how you're, but, but that was so hard for us that when we see our friends or family going through it, we, we do this. We run in and we try and stop them. You see that? You see the kinesthetic of the images there? You see that? Hey, it's not so bad. Let me help you out. Oh, well, fuck. Hold on. I, I twitched there a second. So it's like, that's what steve doing. And I know I've done this to friends and family in my life to an insane degree. Like jump in with a bunch of extroverted energy. Hey, I'm here to help. I'm here to save. Let me help you out. And all you're doing is slowing your friends fall down to the bottom of hell. Which is why all these guys are fucking 50. And why has Bam not made it through? Knoxville's made it through. steve made it through. I haven't watched a lot of the other guys. So some of these guys that are way worse than Bam at times... They've made it through. Why? Because when they're in the tribe, let me jump back over to a tribe picture. This one obviously being the best one. When they're, if, if you're in the forced alpha position where it's like out of your loser friends, if you're the biggest loser, all your loser friends are like, I can't help you, dude. You're, you're even worse than me. I don't know what to do. So you're left all alone. You're fucked. You end up at the bottom first. So it's kind of like the last one to the bottom kind of gets fucked. It's because it's a musical chair thing. You know, because now you have the whole family, you have the whole crew trying to help them, which is only kind of making it worse. Which is why you hear the stories, what will eventually happen or will have to happen. You got to step back. You really love somebody, you got to step back. You, 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 well, take this in context. You might be at the time in the journey, in the story, if things aren't working. If you're Steve-O and you're just talking and talking and talking and talking and everything is a contradiction and he's wiggling and like this is going on for hours, days, months and years... You might try to not keep doing that as much as you care. You might try and step back, let the person hit rock bottom, and still always be there for them. You know, that's something that I've really uh, had to consciously do. Like, say with with raising a kid, it's like watching my parents, watching other people's parents. It's like most parents, by the time you're 25, they're fucking done with you. They don't want to fucking talk to you anymore. You notice that your parents, all your friends' parents, like what happened? Well, the parents, when they were younger, when you were cute, when you were five, when you were seven, they put everything they had into you as a kid, and then they just fucking got burnt out because you're a drug addict, you're a high school teenager, bullshitter, and they just, the parents get old, they get worn out. So by the time the kid comes back around at 25, the parents are like, fuck off, I, I'm out, right? So it's like, no, no, you got to save some energy, sleep energy, you got to save some energy for your friend. Because if in 10 years, your friend goes all the way down the bottom, goes through hell, you don't see him for a long ass time, and then they start to come back up nine and a half years later, don't you want to pick up the phone call when they reach out to you? Don't you want to have enough left where you're like, I'm there for you. I was like writing scripts for you. Be like, tell them this, say this, and it's going to help get you back in the movie. And we got you to a point where you yeah. had a Zoom call with Johnny Knoxville, Spike Jones, Jeff Tremaine, and that was specifically yeah. the call where they were going to make the decision. You were all but back in, and you got loaded and missed the fucking call. You you got loaded and no-showed the call, and, and they had to see you on well, social media. What happened was... Yeah, I didn't have a computer, and I was oh, rushing to Danny Wade's house. And thing, bro. Right, right but, but they had to see you all wasted on social media the night before, so they knew exactly why you missed the call. And they were like, fuck, you know, we, we were this close to letting him back in, but he made the decision for us. And I was fighting I so think, hard uh, for you. I, I, everything meant, meant for a reason, and I, I'm much better off not being in it. I, well, I'm they, happy to not be in it. I, 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 I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to be a part of it. I, I'm much happier without it. See? See what I'm fucking saying? 